Hi, this is uh, welcome to the Sensible Project Manager Hangout. This is Hangout number 15. Today we're going to talk about is we're going to answer the question or address that question is project management for everyone. And <clears throat> I'm <clears throat> excuse me. I am uh, starting this hangout from beautiful Mesa, Arizona, uh, about almost uh, what 1,500 miles from my home. I, am, I live up in Spokane, Washington. Uh, this week I am I'm in my hotel room from uh, Mesa because I just got off the trail. Uh, from uh, My son's been in a survival course for the last, uh, boy, almost about seven weeks, I think it is. And so he taught us how to survive out in the, the uh, desert and in the mountains of uh, northern Arizona. So. I had a, last, a fun last few days uh, sleeping on the ground and learning how to start fires with uh, sticks. Uh, so anyway, I'm a little bit uh, a little off guard on the, today, but that's okay. Well, we're having lots of fun. Uh, I, Hala is uh, joining us today. Uh, welcome, Hala. Hi. So Hala is going to play uh, double duty again today. Yes. She's going to do PM chat. Uh, keep that going, and uh, so we'll. Uh, I'll try to not surprise her too much, but Holly, you'll you'll bring in the PM chat into the discussion, right? Yes. So if you see me looking like I'm chasing a tennis game, it's because I'm looking at the two different <laughs> screens. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've got going too. So, uh, and then show everybody your nice screen in the background. Your your yes. Outside. If you can see PM chat, PM hangout in session. Have it up there. I don't know what yeah. my hand is supposed to go in. <laughs> they need a green screen for you. Yes, they do. <laughs> the light is starting to reflect, but I just wanted to make sure everyone was clear and aware that this is going on because I am at work, so you'll see people moving behind me. <laughs> Great. Um, so just as a couple of reminders while um, Hall is getting people going on the PM chat, uh, who again is going to be um, running the same topics? Uh, if you, any of those that are you, uh, are listening, both on the Hangout and in chat, first of all, you can watch the Hangout live. <clears throat> um, and Holly, you've sent out that that link, and I think I have too. Yes. Um, you can go to sensiblepm.com/hangout and see the Hangout live and follow that along. <clears throat> You know, I have a frog in my throat. I think I brought back from the mountains. Um, anyway, so you, everybody can see that there. Uh, if you want, if I know that as the chat goes along in, in PM chat, that a lot of conversation happens. If you want to uh, actually share some of your thoughts on the Hangout with Hall and myself, you're welcome to let me know. Um, I do need to send you the invite specifically to get onto the Hangout. Yeah. So if you have a desire to to chime in on, on the discussion that's hanging out in, happening on the hangout here, um, you can you can uh, send me a Twitter and then uh, a tweet. Uh, my mine is uh, at sensible PM. Uh, I will be following. Well, why just why don't you just raise it as a as an item on PM chat and then Hall let me know and I'll send an invite out. We'll do yeah. Tweet. So feel free to either tweet me at my personal. Um, uh, Twitter, Hala Saleh one or just PM chat, and I'll let uh, Mark know, and we can add you to the um, to the hangout. Good. So we're very flexible on this. We're just out having fun. We've got a um, we've got some, several other people that potentially might join join us as well. And we'll see how that works. Um, uh, the other thing is, I just wanted to mention um, last week we had a great discussion about. Um, what does project management mean to me? Uh, because of my trip up in the mountains, I didn't get a chance to post um, that. I will be doing that in the next few days. I still have to, I'm traveling back home over the next few days, but if you're looking for that, you can, um, I'll be posting that. It's, it has been on, uh, on the site for a while, but um, I usually do a, a roundup and, and give some information about or some notes about what I've taken as we've gone through that that discussion. So I'll be doing that in the next few days, uh, along with this this update as well. 
So with that, I uh, wanted to first start the discussion with, so really I wanted to, in this, in this discussion, I really wanted to talk about uh, with the topic of this project management for everyone. For me, the, the, it's, it's really talking about is the, is, does everybody make a good project manager? Um, is uh, that something that uh, everybody should step into? Uh, or are there times when people are not, so they, they should stay out of project management? Uh, and it'll be an interesting discussion. So to start the, that, that conversation off, um, Hala, I'm hoping you're going to be asking the question of PM Chat, yeah. how people got into project management in the first place. Because I think it's interesting. Um, I, I would guess most people fall into project management on the accidental way. Uh, where you just there was no intention of becoming a project manager, and uh, they just fall into it. Um, so as you start, Paul, as you start f hearing some feedback, love to be able to hear kind of how people did get into project management. And see, see if that that lines up with what my expectations are. Yeah, I'll get you some um, some unscientific. Statistics. <laughs> um, so I've thrown out the question out there, and uh, the question on PM Chat is: How did you get started in project management? Um, was it accidental? Was it a promotion? Was it other? Um, and actually, I think that's a great way for us to maybe start our discussion. So maybe you let us know: How did you get started in project management, Mark? Yeah. So I. Um Mine was really accidental. I had, I had uh, my degree was in design engineering. I was working for Boeing at the time, and um, my first job that I, I kind of considered it as project, well, my the first job that became a project management position mm -hmm. um, was probably I don't know seven or eight years into my career, uh, and it really was didn't come with the title of project management at the time, um, but it. Essentially, that's what it was. Uh, it was in the time frame where uh, certainly there was project management, but uh, the role and the activities that I, I did uh, were, were strictly project management type of activities, and I didn't even know it. Um, I started out in, um, at, as I said, at Boeing as an engineer testing software, uh, and I even st tried to stamp in. Um, Working, I worked on the triple seven and the design of triple seven, on, uh, uh, and and then I just fell right back into software. So, and I would guess that many project managers, especially the IT realm, start in in that type of uh, realm. Um, anyway, I just became just got more and more responsibility, and um, just it was I, I fell into the it was the accidental one. It it it. Uh, it just became uh, the kinds of responsibilities that a project manager has, and uh, I became uh, a. I didn't. I don't think I actually phys, uh, officially got my project manager title until I decided to leave that position at Boeing, and, and I took a position as a, 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 a. It was actually a temp job uh, as a project manager of, of a software of a hardware upgrade, a computer hardware upgrade. And uh, that was the first specific PM position that I took. Uh, and then I just, from then on, I, I was a project manager. I will to the day I die. Um, but yeah, I just fell into it just by picking up different additional responsibilities that uh, I hadn't had before. How about you, Hala? How'd you, how'd you get into project management? So um, I will, so just so you know, so far, um, f about five people have responded that they uh, started be doing project management in an accidental way. Um, you know, just kind of try starting to do something and figuring out that they were good at it and, uh, and just continuing on down that path. Um, and actually a, a couple of mo mo uh, additional responses just came in with the same type of sentiment that they started accidentally. Um, including uh, Sama from Egypt, uh, Abigail Lee, Lisa Sieverts, uh, Kate, Katie Morgan, um, 
Daniel Kushner said that on Twitter that he actually started um, doing, uh, he was in sales and he worked on a large project for a client who was a project manager, enjoyed it, and then started doing it. Um, another person accidental too. So your intuition about uh, people starting in project management uh, in an accidental way is pretty um, is pretty straight on, I think, with the responses that we're getting. And uh, for me, it was kind of just a transition from another role. I was um, in in a more technical role before, and then I moved into um, from development into quality assurance engineering, and just started kind of naturally trying to make pieces fit together and the pieces of the project work and then um, you know I, I actually worked with a, the head of project management and I really enjoyed what his team was doing and I wanted to, to get into that as well and so um, he took me on to his team and, and I just from then on just started doing project management so kind of um, kind of uh, accidental but also just out of interest once I saw uh, what they were doing and, and felt like it was a natural progression for me and I wondered also if um, I know that as I, as I reflect about to the time that um, as I was becoming a project manager or that concept was first landing in my my face, um, I remember thinking that that seemed like a pretty good um, progression for my career. Um, that I, I it felt like it. The skills that were needed for project management uh, fit my personality a lot, and um, that it, it just felt like it was a good fit for me. And and even though I've changed the um, uh, the industry a couple of times throughout my career, um, that the whole concepts about project management, uh, delivering value to the customer, seeing those projects that that have a uh, succinct start and finish watching that um, can just the, the the satisfaction of being able to get um, deliver a solution to the customer and, and, and help solve a need that they had um, that just rang true to me um, and and it just it kind of it just kind of felt good it felt yeah. like it was the right thing for my career and I'm not, I don't know if that's you've had the same kind of uh, experience or not. Yeah, um, it's interesting that a lot of people on um, PM Chat seem to come from an engineering background, and they did um, work with uh, work with technology and, and engineering, and then um, kind of progressed into the leading teams, and then from the, from there. Um, doing project management. Um, a couple of people did not come from an engineering background, and those are those are actually interesting to me in terms of how um, they moved from an, a non-engineering background to to doing to managing teams that are that were still also in kind of the technical field. And I think it's what's really interesting is after I got into project management, I realized some of the things that you were saying about how transferable it is between industries and how great of an asset that is. Um, is that once you have the skills to really lead and manage a, a project, um, that you can take those skills in so many different into so many different fields, and um, and that gives uh, us as project managers such a unique advantage, I think, um, over over other over other industries or jobs. Yeah, I I, I agree. It, it really does for me um, that that. Being able to transfer that same skill to other industries. Um, throughout my career, I've, for the most part, been in software. Um, and, and that, again, wasn't even my degree. Uh, but I fell into the software and software development. But over the last two years, I've spent um, in an IT group where we, where I specifically was I'm running projects where um, we are doing some remodeling in the physical building that we're in, and I'm just managing the installation of uh, the infrastructure, the cabling, the networking, and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and although it has, it, it, I can use a lot that I've learned from the software industry um, from a technical point of view, it, that is definitely a different thing than software. And making that transition from those particular projects to the ones that uh, I've done in the past has been easy. It's, it's once you understand concepts of working with people, the soft skills, 
um, the the processes that you have, it just seems to fall right into place. Right. Um, so um, that actually, I think that really leads into your second question that we've been thinking about. Yes. Skills, skill set that makes a good project manager. Yeah. So you um, that for me. Um, there's, there are so many different types of people out there that are going to be running lots of different kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. And um, but for me, uh, thinking about, in fact, I was having um, reading a, a comment that was on my post from the the flash blog, and my my flash blog was all about delivering, taking value, getting a team to work together, and uh, delivering value. I still think that that's the essence of project management. But along the way, um, you still need to be able to have all of the tools to deliver projects. Uh, you, you've got to be able to work with people. Communication is, what do they say, 75 to 90 percent or something like that of a project manager's job is to communicate, um, whether that's through your with your team or that's through uh, providing uh, Status reports, uh, just communication is a big part of it. So if you are not able to communicate your thoughts both on paper and verbally, uh, that is it's a tough thing to do. So yeah, those skills that you have to have, uh, be able to. It seems like it, it's funny because um, as a project manager, I think that I am fairly organized. But that doesn't necessarily transition into my whole life. <laughs> um, yeah, um, that is a really funny comment because every time uh, we do something at home where, uh, you know, I'm kind of not as organized or detailed about it as I would, my husband pulls out the, aren't you a project manager card? And I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> that's at work. <laughs> but no, I mean... I am I am organized at home as well, but you know sometimes you um, kind of the the things or the characteristics that you display at at work can sometimes maybe lapse, but I think they're still characteristic of you and they're still part of your personality. Um, you probably just turn up the volume a little bit when you're when you're at work. Well, it, it's just like uh, a, a builder or the plumber always has leaky faucets at their own house, but they, they know how to do the job. It's just right. uh, sometimes you have to check out, I guess, at home, I think. Nice. Uh, but the skills are there. You just it, you have to be able to um, work with people. You know? uh, so what are, have you seen any other specific comments uh, on, on the PM chat? Um, we're still getting a lot of uh, answers on question one. Um, so a few people are uh, talking about how they actually, you know, started and what things they did. Uh, Jerry um, is mentioning that he wanted to pursue his career in management, and project management attracted him the most, which, you know, that was really cool. Um, Ron said that his start in project management was accidental, accidental as well. Um, he, you know, had some some issues where someone said they had some problems and could you help, um, and he kind of jumped into it uh, and jumped into the role. Um, Michael Greer <laughs> wrote his first PM course for Xerox, which was a proprietary and internal course, uh, which was a one week one week long training back in 1984, and then from then on just went on to um, publish some more and um, is one of our big contributors on PM chat as well. Um, other people are now starting to answer question two, and so we have some answers on leadership skills and communication are important, um, as well as uh, this is from Ben. And then um, we are also hearing that the, the people are asking me to change the question to what skills are not needed for PM because the list would be too long <laughs> in, the actual, in the other question. Um, maybe we can switch the question around and say what specific um, maybe skills that you have contributed to being a good project manager. So you're demonstrating a great one right now. 
um, which is always amazing, and especially not to be sexist or anything like that. I think women do this so much better, and that is multitasking. <laughs> As a project manager, I think that you have to be able to multitask because you have so many. In fact, I don't remember the last time I had a one single project going along um, at, at a time. I usually am juggling, depending on the size, uh, two to to sometimes I've had as much as ten going at a time. Yeah. And uh, so you have to be able to multitask, whether it's even a, if you have a large project and you dedicate it to a single project, you are still having to multitask between uh, communicating with several different types of people. So being able to have that skill, and how I am amazed at how well you are going back and forth between uh, PM Chat and, and talking, so it's a tough thing. I, I know I'm following along, but not as well as you are. I think it's it, it's a combination of factors that uh, contribute to being able to go back and forth between things. Uh, one of them being that I went to college in the era when chat was like at its biggest boom, and so that was pretty much all we did all day long <laughs> was be stuck to our computers doing chat. And um, not that that's a good thing because that means that I'm not as good speaking to people in person or on the phone. I just want to get it done and get it over with, but I'm working on it. Um, and I actually have a, have come a long way in terms of thinking about multitasking, and my thinking has changed um, with that because I, you know, I used to actually tout multitasking as something that was a reason why you know people should hire me. And I think maybe we need to change the definition or the word that we use for that because. We've, you know, a lot of studies recently have been showing that multitasking is a myth, and there's no nobody can actually multitask effectively. You're either going to be doing five things, you know, uh, half baked, or you're going to be doing one thing at a time where you're really putting a lot of your effort and energy, and you're really doing it effectively. Um, and it could go back to time management. So. One thing that um, has worked is that I've, I've actually had teams now where instead of having them work on a couple of different projects or two or three projects simultaneously throughout the course of the day, um, maybe I have somebody who's actually working for, because you know business uh, realities exist where maybe we only have one person who can do, let's say, visual design and that one person is only available um, to us and we don't have another person and we have two or three projects in a row. What I've done is I've made them maybe split their time so that the first half of their day they're working on project one, the second half of their day they're working and totally focused on project two um, because it, 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 having people try to multitask introduces errors early on in the process um, where they're just trying to get something done and get through it and, and they're not as focused and so switching, context switching really um, you know, causes issues in that in that scenario, and then um, just uh, actually in ter in terms of once they focus on one thing at a time, we're saving money in in the long run. It may not look at it, it look like it right now when we can't manage three or four projects at once, but we're saving money because they're um, they're being more productive and they're actually going to get the work done faster. So that's kind of where I've uh, I've landed a little bit in terms of the multitasking. Um, I, I don't see it as much as a virtue now as as I did before, um, but definitely the realities of you know work is is that we we often have to manage a few things at once, but we do have to figure out I think and be more creative about how we split up our time so that we're more effective at the different things that we do. Agreed. I agree. That's. Uh... Yeah, we, multitasking is important. You do you have to be able to, to, to focus. In fact, that is, in my mind, um, I, I guess this is the next thing that I'm thinking of, and, and this is something we don't always talk about. Um, I've seen project management go a couple of ways as far as skills with kind of the opposite of multitasking, the ability to, to dig into the details. Um, I, I, maybe that's the reason why a lot of project managers comes from the engineering side of things because um, engineers in general have the ability to really dig into the details. And 
in some cases, I think that that is a great thing for a project manager to be able to do to help, especially when you get to the point of trying to work a team through um, solving problems. That's when you really need to start digging into the details. But it also can be a curse, uh, whereas a project manager needs to know and understand the, the, the right time to dig into those details and or to back off from those details and rely on, on the team to uh, prove, get into those details. Um, so I think that the, the ability to manage that balance is an important thing for a project manager as well. Yeah. One of the great responses that we got on the Twitter, so we're getting a lot of great responses regarding this question. Um, some people are saying a combination, and I changed the question to be more of what are your personal skills that have contributed to you being a good project manager. Um, people have said things like patience, creativity, facilitation, um, uh, a combination of technical, behavioral, and cognitive skills, um, mainly communication, um, leadership, uh, high level, and uh, as well as low level vision, so ability to see things at the, at the big picture view as well as the detailed view. Um, people skills, um, and then my, one of my personal favorite answers is uh, knowing when to say no. And yeah. I think that is that is so important because when you start out, um, especially, and I think it's funny because when you come from, you're coming from a technical background, like you just said, and if you're coming from engineering and you're used to being the one who solves problems and figures out the way to do something, um, then you're kind of always uh, helping people reach their goal of solving a certain problem and it's hard to then be put into a position where people are asking you to solve a certain problem or to solve something and you, you have to say no in certain cases. Um, and, uh, and especially when it comes to taking on the, uh, some of the tasks that are more suited to the team where you're actually crippling them in the long run if you do take on those tasks and, and, and do those things for them um, now and, and kind of hold their hand versus allow people to figure out how it needs to be done. Um, so th those are some really interesting answers that we're getting. Uh, also some, uh, yes it is saying the art of extracting details from the stakeholders. <laughs> that is a very important one <laughs> because um, uh, not only are, is it hard to get some of the details regarding the business reasons for a requirement, but um, just understanding well, what are they trying to achieve without having them go directly to the solution that they think in their heads is the solution. So without having them directly say, I need a drop down, but say, I need the ability to you know, select the right uh, address or whatever it is that they're trying to achieve. So those are some great, great answers. Um, Robert is joining us on the Twitter chat and uh, our, my great co-host from PM Chat, and he's saying that for him, having fun and bringing personality into the project always works. And if you know Robert, you know he has uh, an enormous amount of personality. Um, and speaking in human terms versus project management process also helps, which is definitely a, a big deal. So those are some of the answers. One of the other ones I see out there that I thought was really interesting was, uh, was a Mark V. Um, political savvy. Uh, what, what are your oh, thoughts? Oh, I just about? saw that. Hmm. Yeah, so it's interesting because I think that at times uh, a project manager um, does have to have some some good savvy on, and, and you, you, they call it political savvy. That, that has, has almost a negative connotation to me, but it, in general, if you don't want to call it that, you can just think about it's It's really that ability to negotiate both sides of things because quite often project managers in the middle and you're helping the team um, be able to, you're playing sometimes that buffer between the team and what maybe management or the, the, the other stakeholders want. And that whole political work or that negotiation you have to do between the teams and the different stakeholders, um, that could be interesting at times too. Uh, and, and actually sometimes it can make or break, it, it can get some project managers into trouble. Yeah. Um... The, using the word political is so uh, is is kind of difficult because it can be polarizing, but it's just you know everything that I've heard 
is that, you know, get used to it. There's politics and work too. And uh, in the workplace that you just need to know how to navigate. And, you know, I've known people on all different ends of the spectrum, people that will, you know, kind of play the game, totally play the game and be, you know, on top of it and know exactly what players. It's like they're playing chess and I never figured out how to do that. Um, and then the on the other end of the spectrum, people who are not even willing to bend at all and would just want to be um, completely, you know, Will not will not kind of um, uh, compromise on their thoughts or their feelings in this certain thing, and and will not try to kind of um, figure out who who to align with or anything like that. They're just moving forward and bulldozing forward. And there's you know negatives to both approaches as well as you know I'm sure each side has benefits. Like the person who's able to play the game can probably advance. The person who's not playing the game at all is probably more at ease. Internally, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's such an important skill with project management. I think if you if you look at it as um, the skills that are typically used in politics, maybe that's how I would look at it. Like what you said about negotiation is a big one. If people, as a project manager, you need to negotiate your resources, your team, um, your time. Uh, you know, your cost, and so many other things. And so being able to do that and uh, achieve what you want while keeping people on your side and keeping people, um, you know, seeing you and your project in a in a favorable light is really is really a, a challenge, but is a good thing to know how to do. Great. So let's move the discussion a little bit differently now. Let's let's talk about um, uh, who should not become project managers. We've talked about uh, how we got how we personally have gotten to be project managers. Uh, we've talked about the kind of skills. I mean, we've, we only touched. There's plenty of skills and characteristics that a person needs to have as a project manager, and we could probably debate a lot of those quite a, for quite a while. But one of the things that I'm interested in is, is uh, really shouldn't be project managers. And I've seen it um, quite often when... Um, when a, a, a an engineer, especially, uh, starts to do to start to really shine, and is doing a great job on projects, they uh, they they seem to deliver all the time. They uh, seem to just have it together, have the ability to um, do what is needed to get the job done. Uh, they're they're just they just are doing a good job. Does does it always make sense, since most of us, it sounds like, since most of us have fallen into project management um, accidentally, uh, and in, in my mind, part of that accidental is, is um, kind of growing your career. It's kind of the next level or, or the, the, the next uh, step for growth in your career. Um, does that necessarily translate into going into project management? So, in other words, should I take, should we have those great engineers or great team members or that are doing such a good job, do they always necessarily translate into being a great or good project manager? Um, that That's always been an interesting thing for me as I see things both in my career, um, uh, maybe I was just the opposite. I think I was a an okay engineer. I think that I, I did a pretty good job. I had a lot. I, I am I am very detail oriented, um, but could I have been moved into project management because I wasn't such a great uh, engineer? Uh, you know, it's 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 those kind of things. But it's interesting. I've seen also sometimes when when people have are that are really good engineers, uh, management looks at them and say, okay, we want to grow this person. Let's make them a project manager, and then they fail at that. They just that just isn't their bag. That's not not what they should be doing. Um, Paul, have you seen you seen that same type of thing or yeah. thoughts about that? Yeah, I keep saying that I moved. You know, once I discovered that I wasn't the best at writing the code, <laughs> that it, you know, it, I I left it to the people who were experts at it, and I and I moved into something else and. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't necessarily. 
I don't think it necessarily means that if you're, you know, a great engineer, you can't be a great project manager, but um, I think it really depends on the personal characteristics or, or skills that, that a person has. So I, I, I don't know that I can generalize that if you're really great at your technical work, then you're not going to be great at project management. It's more that, you know, what I've seen is um, there are certain skills or certain qualities about a person. Um, granted, some of them can be uh, trainable or teachable, but, um, you know, someone who's very, very into the detail level all the time and just has a struggle um, coming up and seeing things at the bigger picture level might not be um, optimal for them to move into a project management role. So um, if, you're, if you're always kind of into the details, and this is something that I've seen in terms of the way that I manage projects and manage teams, um, sometimes this happens where I see engineers that um, tend to really see the the details but get lost actually when they when you ask them to look at the big picture and so for those types of people I make sure that the key people understand the biggest you know the, the big picture and then um, for these people I keep them focused on what do we need to get done um, especially with agile when I'm managing things in an agile way what do we need to get done over the next week over the next two weeks okay let's focus on that and get it done and then figure out what do we need to get done the next couple of weeks um, and it helps compartmentalize things like that. So maybe those the people who um, tend to flail about a little bit once you bring them up uh, a level would maybe not be optimal. That's my my thought. Okay. Well, it's interesting. I, I didn't I did notice um, as you were talking, uh, going back to the um, multitasking, which I don't think I do quite as well. Um, I did see somebody had mentioned that they thought that the Hangout, or as Daniel said, that the Hangout drop, that he was asking if the Hangout drop feed, or Hangout feed drop. Um, it looks like it's okay on my side. So if anybody else is saying that, let, let us know. It's yeah. Do on my side. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's, I, it, it is, to me, um, you were talking about that. The engineers, um, quite often they can become very effective project managers and you know as, as we've seen um, most people that have fallen in especially from a technical point of view have become project managers and that, that works quite well quite often uh, you don't have to become from a technical point of view you can um, you can you can get there in a lot of different ways but um, there are times when people shouldn't be project managers uh, are you, have you been able to catch up on some of those comments yet? Yeah, this is so interesting. So a lot of people are mentioning people who have a big ego and are looking out for their own interests would not be good at project management, which is true. Um, one great answer that we got from Mark uh, in the Philippines, he says that someone who is giving the, te the project team so much autonomy that he or she doesn't even know what's going on. And that is a great answer because there is a, a fine line between having a self-organizing autonomous team and, and just having chaos and being lazy, frankly, and not knowing what's going on and just being like, well, my team is self-organizing and so I don't need to get involved in the details and then you're, you're, you're you know, missing your deadlines or you're missing whatever your deliverables are. Um, people also who tend to uh, blame others um, when things go wrong, that's a, that's a great point as well. Um, the people who might um, be prone to stretching the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, go ahead, I saw the word liars. <laughs> Uh, people who are very rigid and rule-based, um, again, this is Katie, and saying that they're not comfortable adapting with different methodologies. Um, and uh, ad additionally, let's see if we have any extra ones up here. Um, people who don't really care about the customer, that's a good one too. Um, you know, people who are just thinking in a narrow-mindedly about the project and just getting their their deliverables versus thinking about what am I actually delivering and my customer and what am I, who am I delivering to. Um, these are some really great, 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 great answers. Um, people are really agreeing with the people that are saying people that, you know, want all the attention on themselves. You know, they want to be the star of the show. Um, and 
again, more about blaming others. So yeah, it, 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 there's some pretty strong sentiment about some of these and some strong agreement as well on, on some of the key ones here. Um, that's a great, there's some great insights from here too. We're also hearing some things, by the way, just as a side note on the format of the PM Hangout and the PM Chat. Um, for me, I think it's really fun because we get to have people on and we get to talk about things together face to face, which um, is always a great way to communicate. I understand that not everybody can join, but yeah, moving forward, um, the more the merrier. And as we get more people on the on the hangout, um, we can definitely have a lively discussion. Um, although it's really fun going back and forth between the two. Good. Well, a couple things that you mentioned um, out there, I I have found. This is an interesting one for me. Uh, uh, several years ago, I was a director of project management in an organization, which I also tried to run some projects as well. And going back to the um, the concept that you had uh, about the autonomous get being allowing the team to be um, kind of removing yourself too much from the team, uh, mm -hmm. I got myself in trouble even as the director of project management. Because I was trying to, I wanted to keep my feet into into the the uh, as a project manager into the projects, and I found myself um, so distracted with my role as director of project management that I didn't effectively do a good job as a project manager as well. Um, because I, 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 at times I would I would step away, I get distracted, and allow the team to spend a little bit more, uh, be too an autonomous and not have and understand what was happening in there. And I, I started to see some of the deliverables um, slip and those kinds of things. And I just became a little bit too distracted. So um, one of the things that I think is, is a problem is, is if you can't focus on your position. So Sometimes people are in that, that same type of position where I, I was more in management and leading some projects. I don't think I, if doing it again, I wouldn't do it that way. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't uh, because I became too distracted. Uh, the other thing is, is what about the, on the other end, if I'm an engineer, and I know a lot of organizations are set up this way, is it effective when you are an engineer and also maybe running a project as well? Uh, or you know where you're you're distracted between multiple rows and skill roles. It comes back to the whole concept of multitasking and, and doing that. Right. Uh, let's see. So we're getting additional um, answers on getting too involved in the details, as you're saying. And so I think I, that's that's very similar to my, some of my experience as well, where I was. Um, actually trying to take on testing for the testing team and help them out because they didn't have enough um, resources and so I was um, I was kind of forgetting some of the details that I needed to manage at the project management level and things were starting to go in the in the wrong direction uh, so definitely making sure that the role is very clear and that you're kind of sticking to that so that you're not um, causing trouble with the project versus managing it to success um, uh, Daniel Kushner on um, on Twitter is saying that because I mentioned that getting too involved in the details is a problem, and he said that getting too involved in the details is something that he struggles with personally. Um, he he feels like he he he's inclined to get involved, uh, and then but once he trusts an engineer, then he's usually better about it. So um, that's interesting. Is that you know establishing trust before you can kind of let go a little bit. Um, that is, and then actually this is interesting, so um, Nagarajuna, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, from Bangalore. I'm glad, I'm glad you tried that. <laughs> is um, at, throwing out a question there um, about what is the first and essential thing you would do in any project as a project manager. Um, so he, uh, he has been, he has now contributed to our Twitter feed and uh, threw out a question. Um, I think, you know, that question is pretty broad. I mean, it depends really if you're an experienced project manager joining a project for the first time, or you a junior project manager just starting out. Um, but, you know, for the most part, probably a lot of answers will come in around um, 
around just understanding your your subject matter and what is it that you're what is it that you're handling here. So I, I encourage people to look at that question. But um, if we have other questions around what it takes to be a good project manager or what skills or not be a great project manager, we can continue on that path as well. So one of the things, I, one of the ones that you were talking about, I noticed that was, uh, what was it? I think it was Jerry. Um, and, I, and I think I've seen the same flavor a, a couple of them as well. Um, those, that, those people that blame others, uh, that push off the blame um, on things. I'd like to talk a little bit about that because I think that that's an important thing. Um, and, and part of this might be just my personality, in, in a, and I think a lot of it is the, the um, your, your style as a project manager. But I'm a firm believer that uh, a good project manager will take responsibility for things that occur um, on a project that are that, that don't quite go right um, and deflect those things that are going wrong on a project. So um, both both ends of it. I don't I don't think that um, the project manager should get all the glory just because of the role. It seems like we're sometimes the face of, of a project or a project team. Um, I personally like to take and anytime I, I am, my team is is uh, applauded for uh, a delivery or something that, that, that occurs, I usually will try to make sure that I, I raise the visibility for my team and the individuals that are contributing to that team. I think that's an important part of, of project management. Project manager. Uh, I also think it's very important as as we have um, those things that are going wrong that we we don't blame our team members. Um, ultimately, the responsibility is on the project project manager, and so I think that that is a really uh, important thing. In fact, it looks like Ben Ben Ferris is one of the things I'll, one of the people that actually um, mentioned that first. Um, I think that that is really important that we that a good project manager will do that. So somebody that will blame other people or will not accept responsibility, um, I personally think that I'd like to see those those folks uh, stay out of project management or learn learn to do so. Yeah, um, you know Abigail Lee is actually noting on Twitter that um, that one important thing that she looks for right off the bat is people who are late for the interview. <laughs> So if you're going for an interview for a project management position with Abigail, do not be late because you will not be hired. <laughs> um, so definitely, um, definitely, you know, in any job position, if you're late, that's not that's not great. But um, a project manager, if you're expecting them to deliver something on time, <laughs> that might be a big red flag. So maybe another question that we can uh, throw out there is. Um, if, so we've talked a little bit about uh, how we got to be project managers, what those characteristics are, um, what, what types of people shouldn't be in project management. Um, if we find that we have some of those skills that, um, that we've talked about that shouldn't be there, um, what can we do to change? What kind of things, what, kind of, what are those steps that we can take within ourselves to make ourselves better project managers? Um, that, you know, I'm... If, if we, especially um, with PMI, and I'm and I am not as familiar with Prince Two, I am familiar with with Scrum and, and Agile, but specifically PMI requires the, the ongoing, um, the ongoing improvement or the PDUs that we have to that we get. Um, so the whole concept that a project manager needs to continually learn and and improve ourselves. Um, that that is that is an important thing. I think that besides the fact that that's kind of a, a focus that we have in project management, sometimes it, if we find ourselves in trouble as project managers because we are exhibiting those kinds of um, skills or behaviors that we've talked about that of those people that shouldn't be in project management, um, right? If we find ourselves exhibiting those. Ex how do we how do we change ourselves and that introspective. Uh, way of looking at ourselves to to become better. You know, Holly, you, you start saying something. Well, I was just—it's a great question because I think um, 
I think a lot of people will say, you know, getting certified and going through certification courses, uh, which is definitely a step in the right direction and is definitely important, but um, getting a certification doesn't mean that you are equipped to apply that certification. I think um, you really have to continue and, for example, the PDUs for PMI, um, but also just continuing education. You just need to continue to learn and having that drive to continue to want to learn and advance yourself. Uh, some of the things that I've found really helped me have been, you know, continuing to read people's blogs. So there are leaders out there that write about this stuff and that write about how they're doing things effectively. And reading people's um, articles and blogs is, is really a great, um, a great indicator of what things I might want to change about my approach. And keeping an open mind about things that I might not be doing the best way um, and learning from others, other people's successes. Um, has been key. But another thing too is going to leadership trainings that are maybe not even directed at project managers. So training on leadership in general because there are so many skills that are discussed in those types of trainings like communication, like um, you know how to make decisions, negotiation, things like that that um, you can use as a project manager to really become you know so much better at what you do. So those are just some of the thoughts that come immediately to mind. Um, some great answers on the Twitter chat are um, doing postmortems, or what I, I like to turn that around and say doing more frequent actually retrospectives and just having your team and yourself just continuously thinking about how can we improve, how can we improve um, as a team working together from a business, from a you know uh, project perspective, but also as relationships and together as people. So that's a great one. Um, reading, a lot of reading, people are saying, uh, learning, uh, learning from your mistakes, um, asking other project managers that are involved for lessons learned that or that you know around that are really successful at what they do. Um, so those are some great, uh, and, you know, Robert is a big, Robert is a big um, uh, uh, cheerleader of really getting to know more about the business side of things, which I think is so important too. So um, he says developing more business acumen and learning your company's business and market and reading entrepreneurial entrepreneurial type stuff, which I agree with. Um, the more you kind of get into that mindset, the more of a, a, a leader and direction um, type person you become. Yeah, agreed. So um, some of those things that just becoming, uh, studying leadership, and we talked a little bit about last week, I think it was, uh, about the big L, little L, what what kind of leaders we are. Um, that that certainly is something that I'm always trying to improve on, trying to figure out if I, how I can become a better leader. Um, and, and, and just honing those skills, time management, um, <clears throat> that's one of those things that I have, I've had to learn through the years of how to manage my time uh, more efficiently. Um, yeah, so just just going through those kinds of skills and thinking about, I think it, it's I think it's important for us to from time to time taking those. Um, I mean, I, I see a lot of comments of about learning from our uh, mis the mistakes of projects. Um, and I think there's a little flavor in there is about learning from our own mistakes. I'm, I'm a, I, I believe completely that it's important for us to learn, do, take the time to um, look within ourselves to figure out what our skills are, um, what, what kind of things that we need to improve on. Uh, and if we do that on a regular basis and be conscious about how we go about improving ourselves in those those parts of our personalities and our skills that we want to attack uh, and focus in on them. You can almost make them a project into themselves on laying out a plan on how you can improve yourself. That's funny because I just put, uh, threw out a tweet there that said, set aside time for personal advancement and growth every week. And then I said, do it now. <laughs> Um, it's so critical, you know, to really, um, because that, by doing that, you are valuing yourself. Um, you're putting value into your own worth, and, you're, and you are valuing yourself, which will lead to other people valuing you. 
when they say that see that you're investing in yourself and you're growing yourself, but also just the skills that come out of it. Um, you can't let your own skills kind of fall by the wayside and get caught up in the daily craziness because that'll never go away. The only way that you'll have time for yourself is do you create time and you set aside time um, for yourself. So one great thing that you can do is join PM Chat every week or PM Hangout. <laughs> No, no, but but really, setting aside specific amounts of time um, to grow yourself is is really important. Agreed. Another thing, as you're thinking about, and, and this was mentioned a few weeks ago as well. Um, I think Vaughn said said it. Um, it we know that project management is not a static um, discipline. Um, we we have seen it most recently with the. Um, how important um, agile has become to the discipline, and how, uh, for instance, PMI has picked up that, that that concept. Project management will continue to evolve, um, and I think that we as project managers, I found myself when when I was first introduced to Scrum, being hesitant um, to accept that change. Um, I think that we need to in, be be willing to evolve and improve ourselves as project management, the discipline changes, because uh, it will continue to evolve. Um, so I think that's an important thing to remember um, and to keep ourselves viable as project managers. Yeah. Um, one last one that I'll add here is um, teaching others and, you know, volunteering to, um, to teach at for example, either a PMI chapter or a local college or a local university, uh, and I and I full heartedly agree with that. That's Lisa Sieverts um, saying, you know, the, really the best way for you to learn and and get solid understanding of something is to teach it to others. And what better way and to give back at the same time? So that's a great great contribution. I agree with that idea. Um, so thank you for that comment. Um, I am personally going to have to run because I have a sprint review meeting <laughs> and my team is starting to pace back and forth. Um, but it was great joining you, Mark. Uh, this has been great. I will sign off on the Twitter chat as well. And thank you for running this. Thank you very much for joining and then I agree. Well, uh, as you sign off, I will give the last statements and then we'll go. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Um, Thank you, Hala. I appreciate everybody on the, on the, the conversation. It's been a great discussion. Um, again, remember after I uh, that we can uh, watch, go back and review this at sensiblepm.com slash hangout15 when I get this posted. And I also want to remind everybody to uh, get, we've got about 22 days left till um, project manager um, networking days. So go to projectmanagernetworking.com and sign up um, for uh, your event that you're scheduling. So remember to go out and do that. And thanks again for joining the Hangout. Thanks again to Hala for spending the time and sharing and doing that, that, that hard work between uh, PM Chat and the Hangout and giving a lot of input there. So until next week, have a great week, and we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.